Hello, this is David with my third video looking at the use of the Texas Instruments BA2 Plus calculator to solve common problems in financial certification exams, in this case in particular the FRM exam, and we're going to compute the price of a bond using the calculator. Now in a previous video we used the time value of money keys and to compute the theoretical price of a bond we just computed or solved for the present value. The present value is the theoretical price of the bond. Now this problem is from John Hall's 4.2 and in one sense it's more realistic in that our input is the zero rate curve or in other words a spot interest rate at each maturity. So we're going to be given this information, the zero rate curve, particularly, in particular you can see it's an upward sloping zero or spot rate curve such that at the six month maturity the zero rate is what we could call it, we could also call the spot rate, is 5%. The, at one year maturity, the zero or spot rate is 5.8%, and so on in increasing fashion. So unlike a yield, or yield to maturity, that would be implicitly flat. This zero or spot rate is a more realistic reflection of the actual zero rates in the marketplace, and those are the rates that we really would want to use to discount the series of future cash flows. So the other thing about this problem is that those interest rates are given to us in continuously compounded terms. So that would make it difficult to use these keystrokes. So let's just assume that the face value of the bond is 100, and that it pays a semi-annual coupon with a coupon rate of 6% per annum. Now you'll recall that the 6% coupon, when it's given as stated in the problem, it always means per annum. But it pays, in this case, semi-annually, so we're getting $3 every six months. You see the 6%, it's half of that every six months. So we want to separate the fact that the coupon rate is expressed per annum, and that's different than how frequent the coupon is paid. So that's really all we need to know to price the bond. And then what I've got here is the Excel example, and we're just gonna see how it's gonna match the output in the Texas Instruments calculator. So our inputs are in yellow. And again, one of the inputs here is the nature of the zero or spot rate curve in blue graphed here. Now, the fact that these rates are continuously compounded means we need to lean on the exponential function you probably used that before, just to reiterate here, notice that $2.73, if we want to con compound that continuously at a rate of 6.4% per annum over 18 months, which is 1.5 years, this is how we would do that. The exponential function would contain in the exponent the continuously compounded interest rate multiplied by the number of years. Oftentimes you'd see that denoted with an N or with a T. So you multiply those together. And so this notation tells us that it's the 6.4 is being compounded continuously. The fact that we're using E, which is also called a Euler's number, and is equal to about 2.71828. But so that's continuously compounding the 2.73 forward. And then notice by that same property, notice if I divided each side by the exponential function, it would reveal to us how we discount continuously, which is to say, if we take a $3 coupon that's gonna be received in 18 months or 1.5 years, we discount that to the present continuously by multiplying it by E raised to the quantity, negative that rate that is expressed in continuous, con continuously competent terms, multiplied by the number of years, in this case 1.5. So you see how that equals 2.73, and that's just really a drill down on this here conversion of a $3 coupon that translates into $2.73 in present value terms. So that's the all we really need to know now we'll do it in the calculator and what are we doing here again well we're doing the fact that we have a bond with a two-year maturity that produces a series of cash flows so here is the series of cash flows in future value terms in six months there's a three dollar coupon because that's 
half of 6% times the 100 every six months, then in one year, another $3 coupon, then in 18 months, another $3 coupon, and then at maturity of the bond, we have the final coupon of $3 plus return of the face or par or principal value of the bond, 103. That's the series of cash flows. And then the question is, what is the theoretical price of the bond? So we discount each of the cash flows. And so but now the point of this was to use the calculator. And so the styles vary, but this is how I would do this. I just start with the first one and I have, I've given, I'm given the zero rate curve and that first interest rate is 5%, which is 0 0.05. And now remember we're discounting, we're not compounding forward. We're discounting to the present. So I'm gonna make that a negative. That's really the key right there. That first $3, is gonna arrive in half of year, six months, which is 0.5. Multiply those together. What I've really done is computed the exponent there. And then I just wanna take E raised to that power. And you'll notice that's right above the natural log because these are inverse functions of each other. And so I wanna to remember to here hit the second key first because I want E raised to that power and it's 0.98. Now that's approximately I have the calculator currently, um, just to make it easier to look at, formatted to only two decimal places. You can change the formatting to bring it out. So this is not exact, this is just rounding, but the calculator knows the exact value. So that's my, that's just this part here. That's E raised to my negative 5% times 0.5. I wanna multiply that by the actual cash flow. So I say times the $3 cash flow and it equals $2.93. So I have the present value of that coupon discounted continuously at the relevant spot rate. And so I just need to do that for each cash flow. Now the what I do, styles vary here, I like to just store that in my first calculator variable and then go right to the next one. And you'll notice my zero rate is 5.8%, so I'm say 0 0.058. I wanna remember to change the sign. This time that's gonna come out, that's one year out. So I multiply by one, Obviously, I didn't need to do that, but I just like to keep it consistent. And then I want to take E raised to, to that quantity. So second E raised. So And then I multiply by the $3, the second $3 cash flow. And then I store that under my second variable. So I'm just storing my each of the cash flows. And then I have just two more cash flows to do. That next zero rate is 6.4% or 0.064 change the sign, multiply by 1.5 years, rate, and then I want E raised to that power, and then I multiply that by the $3 cash flow, and I store that in the third variable. And in my final cash flow, it's an interest rate of 6.8% negative, multiply by two years in this case, raise E raised to that power. And in this case, I want to remember to include the principal. So it's multiplied by 103, not just the $3. And I get that last cash flow, the fourth one. And I could store that in the fourth variable, or I could just go ahead and add the other three present value cash flows to that final amount. So I could take the 80, 89.9. I'm going to add recall one plus recall two plus recall three equals 98.39. And you'll see it matches what I got in Excel. So we could call that the theoretical price of the bond based on discounting each of the cash flows at the zero or spot rate as reflected in the zero or spot rate curve where those rates are continuously compounded. So I hope that's helpful. This is David the Bonic Turtle, thank you.